Hey guys, in this video I'm going to demonstrate uh, how to use the watercolor Photoshop action. So the way the action works is that firstly you start off with a photo, uh, you brush over um, the parts of that photo where you want to convert to watercolor effect. Uh, you run the action and the action will do all the work for you. Uh, and then everything's layered so you can you know can turn certain watercolors off, you can manipulate the colors. There's a heap you can do, so I'll get into that uh, when we've run the action. So that'll be the first example we go through. And then we're going to open up this photo. Uh, this will be roughly the area that we brush. And we're going to recreate this. Okay. Um, so I'll just click through a bunch of examples now I've got of the effect. So this is the photo. Uh, this is where I brushed. And that was the result that I got. Okay, let's get into it. I'll just close these down and start from scratch. Okay, so there's a few things we just need to check off um, just to make sure that your file is set up correctly and you don't run into any errors. So firstly, as always, uh, with all my actions, just double check your photo um, lay is set correctly as the background when you open up your photo. So it should look identical to this, okay? Uh, if it doesn't, Okay, so for example, if I've just opened up this photo and it's called layer one or something else, just go to layer, new, background from layer, and that will just set it correctly as a background. So you only need to do that step if you've opened up your photo and it doesn't look identical to that, okay? Uh, secondly, go to this top right hand corner icon here, click on that, uh, it's cut off on my screen, but if you scroll down to panel options, Okay, and right down the bottom here, make sure add copy to copied layers and groups is ticked. Click OK. Next, go to image mode. Make sure you're in RGB color mode and 8 bits of channel is selected. And uh, go to image size. Make sure you're working with a high resolution photo. You can see uh, the dimensions of mine here. I found the best range uh, for this effect is anywhere from 1500 pixels all the way up until about 5000 pixels. So, um, but the optimal range is around 2000 to 3500 pixels. Okay, uh, but you can experiment with different sizes and see what kind of effects you get. Cancel that. All right, so now what I need to do, to do is load up the uh, actions panel. So you go to window, actions, and it should pop up uh, to the side here. Okay, and go to this icon here, click on that, go to load actions, and select the watercolor.atn file, <coughs> and it will show up here. Okay, I'll just close that for a second, because what we need to do now is light up the brushes that were included um, in the download. So if you have um, downloaded some of my actions before, whenever my actions include brushes, they always need to be loaded up before you play the action, okay? So to, do, to load up the brushes, we just hit B on the keyboard and we right click, okay? So I've just got the default brushes here, so I need to replace all these with the watercolor brushes. So go to this icon, go to replace brushes and select the watercolor brushes.abr file that was included in the download. And these are the brushes here, okay? So that's all done. So now what I need to do is create a new layer, okay? So go to layer, new layer. And this layer must be called brush, all in lowercase. The action won't run at all um, if that is not 
spell it correctly or you, or if you haven't created the layer so click that and so the idea here is to have the brush layer selected and now we start brushing over our photo where we want to convert that area to watercolor so you can use any color to you know brush your photo bright green here and to adjust the size of your brush um, just use the left and right square brackets uh, if you right click you bring up the brushes panel I always include a soft brush in the top left hand corner of the brushes just for quick access so you click on that and you know you can just start brushing away all right and what I like to do is you know I'm brushing at a hundred percent opacity so this this portion of our photo is going to be quite prominent okay so what I like to do is then lower my opacity down to say 50% and I can brush a little bit more uh, around the edges uh, so these areas that I'm brushing at 50% aren't going to be as um, aren't going to have as stronger effect as this center part where it's brushed 100% so you know I can drop this down to 20% now and brush really softly around here so it's still going to be visible but very very soft watercolor effect okay so I have my brush layer there Okay, I've brushed away and uh, I just need to load up the actions panel again. So if I click on this icon, that's the actions panel. If I twirl open the watercolor folder, okay, I've got two actions here. I've got the watercolor and this one called oil paint finish, C6 plus only. Don't worry about that one. I'll um, explain to you what that one does after I've run the action. So this is one we want to play. So if you twirl this open, um, you can see all the all the commands that make the action work so you just select the watercolor and we click play but before we do that and this is very important if you hit B to bring out the brushes again make sure your brush opacity is at 100% so because I was just brushing then um, at 20% opacity it's going to run the effect um, and apply all the brushes at 20% opacity which is what you don't want so just quickly drag that to 100% or hit 0 on the keyboard if you hit, uh, while you've got your brush tool out, if you just hit numbers on the keyboard, if you look up here, it will change the opacity. See, I'm just typing numbers there and it's changing. So if I just hit, just hit zero, it will change that to 100. So always make sure of that. So it's ready to go now. The action will take about a minute to two minutes to play back. It really depends on the size of your photo and uh, how fast your computer is. I also found that um, CC 2015 runs a lot faster than earlier versions of Photoshop with the action playback, so that's another thing to consider. Uh, so I'm just going to click play. Uh, I'm going to fast forward the video now. I'm going to get to the result, and then we're just going to go through all the layers and talk to you about what they do and how to uh, yeah, customize the um, effect. Okay, the action just finished playing back, and you can see the result. So I'll collapse the actions panel, and we'll go into the layer panel now. So what I like to suggest with every one of my actions, when it's finished playing back, uh, the, th the first thing you want to do is collapse all the folders that are open. Okay, it just needens up everything. So to do that, hold down Control Alt or Command Option and click on this watercolor folder arrow here. If you click on that, it will just collapse everything. Okay. So with any one of my effects, just make sure you do that first. It just needens up the workflow. Uh, okay. So at the top here, I have the brush layer. So if you want to run the action again, just delete uh, the watercolor folder, okay? And the action's ready to go. Now every time you run the action, the result is going to be different, okay? Like the arrangement um, of these watercolors are going to be different. Um, their, you know, their position, their rotation, all that's randomized. And also um, just the general effect um, will be slightly different, okay? So it's worth running the action a couple times and then saving out your Photoshop file um, with each result. And then, you know, just open up each one at the end and work out which one you want to start working with, okay, which one looks the best. Okay, so go inside the watercolor folder now and um, what I'm going to do first is, I'm just going to jump to this layer um, first. This is called Reveal Normal Photo. In brackets, I've got Brush Mask. And so the idea here with this layer is that uh, any areas that you want to clean up a bit, you want to make uh, a bit more prominent, maybe there's too much watercolor um, over a particular area, which sort of distorts it a bit too much. 
what you want to do is select that mask and you want to start brushing white into that layer mask where you want to clear that part of your image up. So select that mask and if you hit B, okay, you've got brush tool out, white click, just make sure you get a soft brush selected and make white your active color, okay. And if I just start brushing now everywhere, you'll see that it starts to revert back to um, the original state of the photo. Uh, but what I've done, if I've just applied, I'll zoom right in, I've just applied a very subtle watercolor effect to this layer, okay, so it's not exactly your original photo, it still has a little bit of a um, watercolor effect applied, but you can see, if I just hide this layer now and show it, you see how it just clears up um, that portion of your design. So I'm just going to um, start again, so I'm just going to fill that in black, so say these two people here, I want to clear that up a bit, I'm just going to brush right there like that and it's sort of cleared that area up now I'll just open up another example um, just to make this a bit more obvious it's good to use that layer this layer for um, people and I'll show you why okay so I just um, let me just show you the original photo so here's my original photo I ran uh, so this is where I, I brushed okay uh, don't worry about those changing of colors it's just still the one one layer, uh, and that was the result that I got. And so when I looked at the results, I was looking at his face and I was thinking that I want that to be a bit more clearer, what's going on. Okay, it's still a bit messy, so I'll jump to the reveal normal photo uh, mask here. I'll grab my white brush and I just brushed one big patch over his face, like that. And you see that it has really brought back the original photo, but um, it's a bit too strong. Like, I don't like how it goes from the original to sort of this messy watercolor effect. I want it to have a bit more of a blend. So what I like to do when I've brushed on that area, I'll just click and drag on this word opacity here. I'll drag that to zero, okay? So now it's essentially hidden the layer, okay? Zero percent, does nothing. So if I click and drag now to the right to increase that opacity, I'm just slowly bringing in that area that I brushed. And I don't want it to be a lot, maybe just there. So that way we still keep um, the original, some of the original look, but we're just bringing back um, uh, a little bit of the original photo just to make his face a bit clearer, okay? So you don't always have to use this layer, but it's really good for, um, say, portraits of people because the watercolor can get a bit messy and you can you know, just use this layer to brush over, say, their eyes and nose and their mouth and then you yeah, lower the opacity and start just dragging up a little bit to um, bring that back. Okay, so I'll go back up to the top and we've got this layer here called overall color saturation. So if you double click on this, uh, the one you really want to play around here is the saturation handle. So if I drag this to zero, uh, sorry, minus 100, uh, it just converts it to black and white. So if you want a black and white watercolor, just drag that all the way down. By default, I've got the saturation turned up a little bit, okay? So the original saturation of your photo would be about there. So I've just got to turn up. But I generally like to experiment with turning up way higher. Okay, so I'm just going to turn this way up, make it really look like bright colors have been, been used. Uh, so you prefer that, so I'm going to lock that in. Okay, I'm just going to turn off auto select. So this layer here, overall contrast, I've got in brackets opacity. Whenever I have a layer um, and it's got in brackets opacity, I'm, I'm basically telling you to um, experiment with this layer through its opacity. So currently, if you look up here, it's 20%. So if I drag this to 100%, adds a lot more contrast. I'll drag it to zero, you know, 100. So you can see that there. So by default, it's at 20%. And I generally like to just turn it up a little bit just to see if it looks any better, or even bring it back to zero. I don't actually think it needs any additional contrast in this, so I'm just gonna turn it off. This layer here, uh, it's another contrast, I've got contrast brightness adjustment. It's a um, exposure adjustment layer. And the ones you want to play, or you can play around all three of these handles here. I like to play around with the offset here. So if you drag this to the left, um, you can see it looks for the darker, the darker areas in your photo and darkens it up a bit more. So, or you can drag the opposite way, it will brighten up the shadows, okay? So generally, I just like to experiment with just dragging it down a little bit to see if that looks any better. Uh, I do like what it's doing, just adding a little bit of darkness to these areas. Looks pretty cool. Um, gamma correction, uh, you, yeah, you just want to play around with that to see if it does 
an injustice to your photo. Um, I think I'll leave that and expose. You can play around with that one as well. Color adjustments. This is one you can just play around with. If you just double click on this, um, you can target the shadows, mid tones, and highlights if you want to add different colors in. So, for example, I could target the shadows and add a bit more red, Whoop, a bit more red into the shadows. Um, we can go a bit more magenta. Okay. Um, oops. Just undo that and go into the mid tones. Uh, maybe we want to add a bit of warmness to the image, so I'll add a bit of yellow and a bit of red. Okay, so that's just there to experiment with. You want to play around with the colors a bit more. This layer here, overall color tint. So you can see this cream sort of overtone to the photo. That's done through this layer. So if you just double click on this box here, I'll just make this a bright yellow. You can see you can change the colors that way. But obviously it's best to use lighter colors, like a really light blue. Uh, or any one of these colors, but by default um, it is a cream color. Now this layer works kind of hand in hand with this layer in the bottom here called base color. Okay, you can also change the color here as well. But you can see it doesn't really intersect as much um, with your um, focal area, like this our watercolor area here. <coughs> Excuse me. So you can play around with that. Uh, what I like to generally do this one is just try um, drag this brightness up a little bit just to see. Um, if it suits the design any better, but yeah, you want to play around those two together. But this is the main one you want to change. Okay. Paper texture. Uh, I'll just zoom in a bit here, so you can see this canvas texture that runs over the um, design. That is done through this layer here, the paper texture. So if you don't want it, you can turn it off. Okay. Also, if you want to lower the opacity of that, it's at 25%. Um, if I just hit one on the keyboard, that'll lower it to 10%. Okay, so if you want to have a really subtle canvas effect, you can turn the opacity down. Okay. So I've gone over that one there. So these two uh, are my favorite two layers to play around with, uh, with the watercolor action. It's called uh, black photo edges, and again, I've got in brackets opacity, and then we've got white photo edges. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to turn these both off, and you can see what's going on here. So we'll start off with the white photo edges. So if you turn this one on, it'll be on by default. It will look for all the um, the bright edges in your photo and it'll apply sort of like some white paint strokes to it. Okay, so you can clearly see that as I turn it on and off and how much of an effect that has. But what I like to do is play around with its opacity. So that might be too strong. Okay, so I could just um, lower its opacity down a bit so it becomes more of like a cream colored paint versus 100% more white, so I can lower that um, down a bit, and you don't, you know, you look around your photo, you don't have to use um, these white photo edges everywhere, say um, on this right hand side here, this building, I don't want any white photo edges, I would select the mask, okay, and if I brush black into that mask, it's going to hide it, if I brush white, it's going to reveal it, so uh, to make black your act active color, just hit X on the keyboard, so black is now my active color. So if I just hit B, get my brush out. If I start brushing now, you'll see that, well, if I just brush everywhere, you can see that I'm removing the white photo edges, okay? And if I X again, you flip, if you hit, keep hitting X on the keyboard, it'll flip uh, between black and white being your active color. So it's good for brushing. So now if I want to reveal some white, I'll brush it back in, all right? So, and the same with black photo edges, if, if you turn that on, it'll look for the darker photo edges and it'll um, put that on a separate layer. So you can control the opacity of the, you know, the, the dark and the bright photo edges, which is really cool. So this one, I've got brackets opacity because it's at 40%. White photo edges by default was at 100. So if I turn this one up to 100, you can see it really darkens up the edges, or you can just have it at zero, maybe you just want the white photo edges. By default it's at 40, uh, I'm just going to play around with this and see, I'm just going to use a tiny little bit of it, 25%. So generally when I've run the action, I jump to these three layers first, okay, usually this one, and then I quickly just jump to these two and flick them on and off, see how it affects the, affects the um, design, okay. So this folder here in the sketch lines, by default it's turned off. So if I turn that one on, 
I'll have to zoom in a bit here so I can see uh, what is going on. Where am I? Yeah, I'll zoom in here. So if you look around the building here, you can see, I'll turn this folder on and off so you can see what's going on. So you can see how when I turn this folder on, it applies, it looks for the contours in your photo and applies a subtle white stroke around them. And it'll also fill in those areas with like a crosshatch sketch. Okay, so you can see all that there, like down here on the boat, uh, up along the back here, you can see on the building. Okay, so that'll um, appear randomly all over your photo. Okay, but by default it's off, so turn it on to see how it, how it affects your watercolor. So if I go inside this folder, there's three layers. This layer here, I'll turn these off for a second. If I turn this one, top one on, contour lines, if you look at the building here, as I turn it on and off, that will just apply that white stroke. If I turn these two on, <coughs> excuse me, they are just the crosshatch lines. Now, crosshatch lines one and two, it's in the same position. I've just duplicated it to make it a bit more prominent. Okay? And if you just hit Control or Command J on that layer, it will again, it'll just keep duplicating that layer and it'll make it uh, more prominent. So that is the inner sketch lines. Um, hit control when you've zoomed right in if you hit control or command zero that will just fit your um, your photo to the screen now uh, so if you turn that turn it on just check out how it looks I'm just going to leave it on just adds a nice little bit of detail in there photo color layers okay if I turn this off that essentially removes all the color you can see this little patch here that's still in color because that is where we brushed um, into the reveal normal photo. Okay, you can see that there. So let's jump inside the photo colors layer here, folder, sorry. And there's uh, a bunch of layers here, okay. Uh, these help make up the overall effect. Now I've got these, uh, these, these colored layers above each one of the photo colors, uh, sorry, each one of the watercolors. And that will add a single color to that area. So if I just turn this the visibility for this effect on. So what that what that does, it just applies a single color to that particular watercolor. And if I double click on that red box, you know I can pick pick a much softer color, maybe like a golden color. And I'll just flick all these on for a second, so you can see what's what's happening. Okay. So yeah, you can go in, into these and manually recolor each one. So if you don't want to use the original colors. Um, the original photo colors of your watercolor. Uh, just, uh, just use these boxes here. Turn them on. Okay. So that looks pretty cool. I've just added a couple. Of, I've just turned these on. I haven't really changed the colors, and that's giving off a nice effect. I'll turn these off. Go back to our original look. Okay. Um, and you can see as I move these around, it breaks up. It breaks up our photo into different sections, okay? Different watercolor sections. Uh, you can move them around. You can actually, you know, you can do things like if I hit Control or Command U on that layer, I could use the um, hue and saturation slider here. I could play around with the hue, and that will just randomize the colors of that um, particular area. Okay, same with this one. Or I could go colorize, okay? And it's similar. It's much similar to turn on that. Um, that uh, solid color layer there, you can use the hue handle here, apply color that way. Alright, so going on down, we've got this folder here, outer sketch lines, if I turn this on and off. So wherever you brush, so I'll turn on my brush area here, what this folder does, it applies um, some random sort of sketched hand drawn lines around the perimeter. Okay, I'll turn it off. So if we look, uh, if you look over here, this right hand side here, as I turn this folder on and off, you see those random lines that's generated. Okay, so if you don't want those, simply just turn the folder off. Okay, let's go inside and take a look at what's in here. So I've got this, uh, these three layers, wiggly lines one to three. So these are these little, um, these wiggly lines here that shoot out from the edges. Okay, just add that for a little bit of uh, extra effect. If you don't want them, turn them off. If you want more, just select them, hit Control command J. I've just created another three. I can then move them around, rotate them, do whatever. 
Okay, edge dash lines. Uh, this one might not have shown up. Let's have a look. Oh yeah, you can see those yeah those cross hatch lines there, and scribble lines. There's just some more random lines um, created. Okay. So these two layers here will again, um, it'll look for the highlights in your photo and it just applies them in a different way to the white photo edges. So if I turn this one on, okay, hasn't done too much to this photo, but depending on your photo, it'll have, you know, a different effect. But what it does, you can see as I turn it on and off, it's just adding, if you look along the left hand side here, it's just adding some subtle um, details back into your photo, but only in the brighter areas. So you can see I've got photo highlight soft, and then this one below I've got photo highlight strong. So if I turn that one on, it will look to enhance um, different areas that are bright in your photo, but it'll it'll make it a bit more dramatic. Okay. Um, so again, that'll differ a lot um, depending on the colors and the brightness of your photo. So just turn them on, see if it looks any good. If it doesn't, just turn it off. This folder here, splatter texture. This is the one, um, it's a bit more grungy. You can see as I zoom in around here, I'll turn this on and off. So if you look around here, it's, you know, it's a bit more, it's got a bit more splatters, a bit more dots. Um, okay, so that's that one. If you go inside, zoom out, if you go inside here, um, that's the layer there. And again, I've just added a solid color if you just want to add a single color to that. So you can just double click on that box. So you can see as I change the colors there, uh, what that's doing. So I got that option. Uh, if you hit Control or Command J on that folder, uh, it will just make it a bit more prominent. Main photo visibility. Okay, if I turn this off, you can see this this particular photo. It's not doing too much. It's just removing a lot of the blacks. Um, but what I found with you know running this action across a lot of photos is that when you turn this one off, it generally removes a lot of the visibility from your photo. So it's best to just keep this one on. Okay, um, it's just an essential layer to you know to bring the effect together. So you don't really need to do too much of that. What you could do is turn it off and then look around the design and see what areas you might be thinking look better with it off, and then control that through the mask. Okay, so. Um, you know, this area to the left here, I'm turning it on and off, I'm thinking, oh yeah, it looks better with it off. So I'll grab my black brush, I'll hit B. Currently white is my active brush, I need to flip that to black, so we hit X. And I'll just brush there to remove it. Okay. Uh, but actually, I think it'll look better with it on, so I'm going to undo that. So this folder here, watercolor textures. These are just a bunch of additional textures. They appear more around uh, the perimeter. Okay, um, whoops, of where you brushed. So again, uh, you can control these layers, add colors to them. So you can turn, uh, turn these on. There's this folder here, watercolor texture through. I had to put this one in a folder, uh, basically because I had to use two masks um, to achieve the effect, okay? So again, you can turn this, uh, this color one on. So what I might do here is I'll just turn off these these colors, and uh, I might try and recolor this one, make it a bit more, make it a bit brighter. But I don't actually think that looks better. What I might do is just. Just make it a little bit brighter. Okay, that'll do. Okay, so that's the watercolor textures. This folder here, background watercolor textures. These uh, appear um, very subtle watercolor effect that appears around the background um, of your your uh, subject area. So background texture one, you can see that one there. So I'll turn that on and off. So that's spread out, that applies watercolor textures that are a bit spread out. And then this one here, background texture two, that will apply a very subtle texture over the, over the entire, uh, over your entire photo, okay? Uh, now, there is 
something that I always like to do when I've played around with all the layers, okay, um, I like to then add, I like to experiment with by adding a little bit more contrast and saturation. But the way I like to do this is I will merge, um, well, let's do it now. So I select the overall color saturation layer and I hold down um, Control Shift uh, Alt E or Command Shift Option E. And what that'll do is basically merge our entire design here on one layer. Okay, so I've got it on one layer. And what I like to do is just set that blend mode to hard light. And what that does, it just adds a lot more intensity to your photos. So you can see that there. But I don't like to use that as at 100%. I will click and drag on opacity there. I'll drag it to zero. Okay, so zero. And what I like to do is just drag it up a little bit. Okay. So I use about 25%. And so all that's done is just added a bit more saturation, a bit more contrast. So that an overall bit more punch to the design. So if I turn that on and off, so you can see that there. So yeah, when you've played around, when you've got something you're happy with, uh, do that little trick and add a bit more uh, punch to the design. Now, we'll go back into the actions panel here. So we've got this, uh, this action here, okay? This is called Oil Paint Finish, and it's for people using CS6 and above only. It, it uses um, Photoshop's Oil Paint effect, uh, but it's not available in um, below CS6. So if you just uh, click that and click play, just give it a few seconds. So what that does <coughs> is it's created um, a couple couple of layers at the top here. <coughs> we have this layer here called Oil Paint Finish. Now, if I zoom in, you'll see what it's done. It has, um, on top of our watercolor effect, it's, it's also applied a oil paint effect. Okay? And that's done through this layer here. So if I turn that on and off, so it smooths out everything as well. So you might prefer that. Okay, I think it looks pretty cool on this, so I might just leave it. Um, I've got this layer here called Add Sharpening in Opacity. That just helps bring out, um, I'll zoom in a bit. If I turn it on and off, you might see it looks quite soft, and then you turn that on. It just brings out the details a lot more. Okay, uh, and I've had to move the paper texture up higher, um, just because I had to, basically. So if, uh, if you want to compare uh, against, yeah, just turn these three off and turn it back on so you can make a comparison. Alright, now you only want to run that action at the very end. So when, you, when you're happy with everything and you just want to check what the oil paint looks like, play it then, okay? Because it merges everything onto one layer. You can see that there. So basically any changes that you make under here won't have any effect because this layer is on top, okay? So let me just, uh, Compare, I'm going to try that one to the top. Let's compare that against the original. So I'm just going to shift select all these layers and folders. I'm going to hit Control Command G to group that. So there is our original, and there is our watercolor. Okay, so really easy to use, really fun to use. So what I'm going to do now is uh, open up that next example, and again, I'll put links down to these photos in the description so you can download them and uh, you know follow along. Okay so I've got to open the next example and so the first thing I want to do is create my brush layer. So if you go Control Shift N or Command Shift N that will create a new layer. Uh, remember this needs to be called brush or in lowercase. Okay? And have your brush layer selected and so what I'm going to start doing start brushing over my photo. I'm just going to grab red uh, and start brushing away. Okay. So as I'm brushing, I've constantly got my fingers on the left and right uh, square brackets. Okay, so I'm adjusting the size of the brush as I go. So as I get into a wider area like this, I'll just make my brush bigger. As that gets to the edges, I'll start narrowing the size of the brush. Okay, I'm just going to hit um, E. I'm just going to raise a little bit there. Uh, hit B again. Just brushing this area in. So 
So now I'm just going to use a softer brush. I'm just going to hit 5 on the keyboard. So I'll change it to 50% opacity. So I kind of want the watercolor effect to fade off. Now I'm going to hit 2, 20%. Brush down there. And I'm just going to brush 20% opacity around the edges here. So it brings in a little bit of the background. Okay. And I'll just brush a little bit more here. Okay, ready to go. So remember to make sure your brush opacity is at 100% before playing the action. So I'm just going to hit 0, change that to 100%. Load up the actions panel, select the watercolor. I always like to twirl this open, okay, when I'm running the action because as the action is playing back, you get an idea of how much longer it's got to go through this scroll bar here, okay. So I'm just going to click play and I will fast forward the video and get to the result. Okay, the action is done and there's the result. So let me just firstly collapse all these folders. So Control Alt or Command Option and click on this folder arrow. Okay, so it's all collapsed. So let's just compare against the original. So there's the original photo. Whoops. And there's the result. Okay, so firstly what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump to the reveal normal photo mask. I'm going to grab a white brush. So currently black is my active color. So I just hit X to flip that to white. I'm going to brush one big patch over the dog's face. And I'm going to lower the opacity now to zero. I'm just going to drag it up just a tiny little bit. Just a, just a fraction to bring a little bit more detail. Probably does actually, actually doesn't even need it. Okay, so I might actually just turn it off. So let's now I'm going to jump to the contrast brightness adjustment. I'm just going to play around with lowering this offset a, a little bit. See what that looks like. Well, I think it looks okay how it is. I'm going to jump to the color saturation. Uh, I'll keep the saturation a bit lower for this one. Okay, so I'm going to jump down to the uh, black and white photo, photo edges. I'm going to turn them both off to see what that looks like. I'm going to turn on the white. White looks good. Black, I'm going to turn this to 100%. Uh, probably doesn't need it. Oh, it's just a fraction, about 28%. Uh, these inner sketch lines, I'm going to turn it on, see what that looks like. Zoom in a bit here. Uh, I might turn off the contour lines. Just have that those sketches. The outer sketch lines, I'll turn them off. Okay, I'll leave them on. Now, I'll check out what these are going to look like. So you can see that's just adding a little bit of highlights on the uh, dog's chest. And that one's just boosting up a bit more. So probably don't need... I'll turn this... I'll leave this one on because I like what it's doing there. Okay. Uh, let's now... Let's jump to the splatter texture here. I'm going to apply this color. And I'm just going to play around with, you know, adding a... Adding a different color. Maybe something like that. Uh, I'm going to just add a little bit more contrast to this. Okay, uh, let's jump to the photo color layers. I'm going to see if I can add a single color to any one of these. That looks pretty cool. I might just not make that as intense. So, so what that's doing, it's targeting this layer that targets the, the shadows. So we're applying, applying a single color essentially to the shadows. That'll do. Uh, I might see what a, a reddish tone looks like here. I don't, I don't think it needs it. I'll turn that off. This one. Don't mind that. I'll just lower that. Um, saturation down a bit. The blue is not affecting the design too much. And this will just keep keep off. Okay, I'm going to jump to the... Uh, well, I'll turn off the main photo visibility later, see how that's affecting the design quite a lot. So I'm just going to leave that... Uh, I'm going to leave that on. So watercolor textures, let's jump in here. 
complete that. I'm going to change that to a white. Okay. Uh, this one. Uh, I think we'll keep that as a white as well. Now I'm going to change the base color here. Jump to the overall color tint. Like that. Now, what I don't like, I think it might be coming from this layer here. You can see around the dog's chest that black kind of outline there. So, what I'm going to do, I think, yeah, it's coming from this layer here. So, I'm just going to jump to the mask. I'm going to grab a black brush. And I'm just going to brush that away. Uh, okay. Now I'm going to jump into the color adjustments. So I'm just going to play around these handles a bit. Jump into the shadows. I might duplicate uh, this, this background texture. See what that looks like. It's going to make it a bit more, a bit, a bit darker. I might do the same for this one. Okay. Looking pretty good. So I'm going to do that trick now where we merge that uh, our design onto one layer. So Control Shift Alt E or Command Shift Option E. Merge that, I'll set the blend mode to hard light and I'll lower the opacity to zero and I'll just drag it up, whoops, up at zero and just drag it up a little bit. Like that. Okay, yeah, looking pretty cool. Now, there's one more thing I want to cover here is if you want to import your own paper textures to put in the background. Okay, so to do that, uh, you can select the base color layer here. Now you can go to File, Place, uh, Place Embedded, and just navigate to a paper texture. I've got one here. I'll put a link to some free paper textures in the uh, readme file and the download, so you can check them out. So it's now placed in my design, uh, but what I need to do now is hit Enter to confirm its placement. But before that, I'm just going to scale this up. So holding down Shift Alt or Shift Option, I can scale that up to fill the design. Okay, click OK. So what I've done now, I have got a paper texture in the background. Now, if I want to remove the color, uh, there's a few ways to do it, but uh, the way I'll do it, I'll just right click and go uh, Rasterize Layer. So currently it's a um, smart object. Okay, so there's the certain things you can't do to the layer when it's a smart object. So if I go to fold down control shift U or command shift U just to quickly desaturate it, it won't let me do it. Okay. So I need a rasterize layer first. So I'm gonna right click rasterize layer and I'm gonna do the same. Control shift U, desaturate it. So if I turn that layer off, you can see what that's doing. Um, you can change its blend mode to say uh, overlay. Actually, that's not going to work because we're just falling back onto a normal color. So what you might want to do is just lower the opacity. So start at zero and just add a little bit of, you can see it's just adding a little bit of paper texture. And another method that you might want to use, if I drag this all the way to the top, okay, I'll bring this up to 100%. Uh, you can change this to something like color burn to make it really intense. Okay, so I'll drag that opacity to zero. And you see as I start dragging up, it's really having an effect on the on our subject. Now the way to mask that out is if you hold down control and click on our brushed area up the top here, our brush layer, what that does, it, it grabs that as a selection. And so what I want to do, I want to exclude that area 
from this paper texture, okay? If I just hit this mask icon now, what it's going to do, it's going to confine that texture to our selection. So now that texture is only appearing inside our, uh, inside our subject. So but I'm going to undo that. I want to exclude it from that area. So to do that, you hold down Alt or Option and then click on the mask. Okay, so now it has, if I go inside that mask by holding down Alt and clicking on it, you can see it's excluded from that area. So now I've just got my texture which appears just around the edges of our, around the border of our uh, subject. So that's how you import your own uh, texture. So what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to check out the oil paint finish to see what that looks like. Okay, it's done. Looking pretty cool, but I don't think it's needed, so I'll just I'll check it before and after. I don't think it's needed, so I'm just going to delete them. So it's a bit of a just trial and error with the oil paint finish. Some photos it'll look awesome with, others you'll see it just doesn't need it. So uh, just check it out. Okay, so that's it. As you can see, it's really simple action to use. Just play around with those main layers, experiment, you know, with turn them on and off, just in their opacity. Jump inside, you know, the photo colors and the watercolor texture layers. Apply single colors. Um, check out what they look like. Okay, um, import your own texture, textures, add some text, do what you want. Um, it's a lot of fun. So uh, if you're stuck with the effect, just send me an email and I'll um, assist. But if not, have a good time, isn't it? Thanks.